Hey guys, welcome to the shop. Today we're going to be unboxing a new tool. Um, I had a follower ask me if I had a finger sander. No, this is not an inappropriate joke. It really is something that, you know, you can use in the carving world. And I had said no, but I was recently at Harbor Freight. I know it's not one of my favorite stores, but they had one on sale. So I picked one up and uh, decided I'd unbox it with you guys and would use it a little bit here today. So be sure to stick around, give this video a thumb up. Alright, so like I said, I got this finger sander at Harbor Freight. Um, you know, I'm not always promoting Harbor Freight tools because they don't last very long. If you are just getting started though in carving, I mean, it is a great place to get your starter tools. Chicago Electric does make some halfway decent tools, but they're not gonna last you a lifetime. You know, they're not like some of them other big name brands, but it is a cheap way to get started in, uh, in carving and being able to finish your carvings with some sanding. So, like I said a few minutes ago, I've never had a finger sander. Now in here they call it a band file belt sander. This one's a half inch wide. Um, I also picked up a couple extra belts here at Harbor Freight for it. I think I've got five in a pack and each one is a different grit. So I think these might have only been three, four dollars box. The tool itself was right around 35 bucks. Normally I believe it's around the $50 range, but it was on sale so figured hey why not you know I'll pick it up and uh, unbox it with you guys and I figured we use it a little bit here on a couple small carvings and just kind of see how it performs so let's uh let's get right into it I'm gonna grab this old knife here to cut tape but I guess I don't really need it just got one of these little wheels here yep let's rip this thing open. all right probably could have done that a little bit neater but you know not to worry about it. I'll burn that later. So we've got the usual uh, owner's manual kind of stuff that comes with most tools. Chicago Electric always, always has an owner's manual. Don't lose this. There seems to be a small uh, Allen wrench in there. I'll show you guys in this angle. You might be able to see it a little better. Let's not lose that. All right. Things in a bag. Okay, well, I guess that's it. <laughs> There's nothing really else in the box. The tool comes with some sandpaper on it already, which is pretty nice. Um, in my normal fashion, I'm not going to look at instructions until I'm frustrated and can't figure it out. So, you know, we'll figure this out as we go. There's a little knob right here. You just twist this. It loosens it up so you can spin this thing around. Oh, there we go. Push it in, spin it for all kinds of angles it looks like. I'm just gonna keep it straight for now. Twist it back, kinda tightens it up a little bit. It's pretty tight, not going anywhere. Let's see, it looks like it's able to, to take a handle, kinda like you'd see on a big screw gun or your angle grinder. Looks like you could fit a handle on there if you wanted, but it doesn't come with one and the box didn't show one on the, uh, on the cover so I guess if you got one laying around you could probably just put that on if you wanted to use it it's not an angle grinder though I mean it, I, I don't think this thing's gonna yank out of our hands but maybe we'll see let's see here playing around with some of these knobs see what we got going on the knob here up on the end seems to loosen up the belt tilting it back and forth we also need that Allen wrench by the looks of it to take this little cover off to uh, replace the belt. Yep. And there's the belt down inside. There is some loose grease on a fitting in here. That's going to be, well, it's going to end up being full of sawdust and whatnot, but, you know, we'll see how it goes. So really, I'm sitting here looking at this real quick put it over here so you guys can see it better up on top of the screen um, basically it's an angle grinder with a sanding attachment so even if this angle grinder dies I guess if 
the uh, the end of a better angle grinder fits in there, you could probably just upgrade your grinder to you know something better. But for thirty five bucks, I mean, can't really go wrong, right? Might as well see how it works at least. Let's see. Um, just kind of fiddling around with some parts here. The belt really doesn't want to come off though. Got everything loose. So it looks like the end of it pops in just a little bit. The belt comes off. Now looking at it, it does kind of seem like a pain in the butt here to fart around because this belt does not want to come out. It's like wedged down in. There we go. Alright. I don't know what grit's on here. 120. Well, I'm going to put the 120 grit back on, and we're just going to hit these small carvings and just kind of see how well it cleans them up. Plus, you guys get an idea here of how easy it is, or not easy it is, to put a belt on and off this thing. I'm going to start the belt here uh, on the part that spins. That's attached to the motor, and then we'll bring it forward and get it hooked on the rest of the way. This belt looks pretty rough, like this thing's already been used. I don't know. It's not, uh, not the nicest looking belt. I mean, there is some paint on the belt already. It's already got a nice tear in it. Hmm. Well, for the purpose of using it for the first time, I guess we'll, you know, we'll just have to see how it goes. I'm gonna tighten this screw back down, which should be tightening our belt back up. Yep, it is. Okay. Not sure what this lever does. Again, if you buy one, feel free to read the instructions. We're gonna put this cover back on. So what I'll end up doing so I can keep this Allen wrench with this is I more than likely, I'll take this thing and tape it right to the uh, the cord attached to the tool. That way there, it's, it's always with it and I can just use it whenever it's needed. Kind of wish tools though, when when they came with a specific wrench, just had a spot to attach them. I mean, you know, if, if, if any of you companies out there actually watch this video, think about that next time. Have a place to put the little wrench that you give us for any tool to be attached right to the machine. Like that would be awesome because in about five weeks, this thing's gonna be gone and I'm gonna have to go find my Allen wrench kit and fart around with, with doing this, but good idea. You guys should uh, think about. All right, I'm gonna get this thing plugged in and we're gonna start sanding it. All right, so before I get going, I'm also gonna be wearing my dust mask because we're gonna be creating some dust here. And there's kind of a uh, <laughs> little question in my mind I'm thinking some of you might be asking, why do you downplay Harbor Freight and Chicago Tools and then review them anyway? Well, because I understand that not everybody can go out and afford, say, DeWalt or Rigid or, you know, some other big name brands, Milwaukee and things like that. I understand that, you know, we've all got to start somewhere and these are the start somewhere tools unless you've got a surplus of cash and you can afford those expensive tools. If that's the case, by all means, go buy an expensive tool. It's going to probably last you longer. But at least with these tools, you can get started fairly cheap. You can see if it's something you're even going to use all the time before you go spend a hundred, two hundred, three hundred dollars on, you know, a tool that you can get for 30 to 50 bucks. So, you know, that's, that's part of it. The other reason why I kind of downplay these tools is it seems like the switch on them always burns out. It always goes bad. Um, I've got grind. Whew, sorry about that. I've got a bunch of grinders that I use that are from Harbor Freight. They are the Chicago Electric. The switches always go. I end up having to hardwire them in, so as soon as I plug them in, they're on. Um, hopefully, hopefully this one will, this this will last longer, but you know, time will tell. So, all right, we're gonna put the dust mask on and uh, start sanding this stuff up and uh, see what we got.
All right, so I got one of my little morel mushrooms here cleaned up. Um, I mean, it does a nice job. I'll probably use my drill with a flap sander or something like that to clean this up. But I can see the versatility in this though. You can get into some nice tight spots and really do some sanding and clean things up well. Um, something, if you noticed, I was messing around with that knob. The uh, sandpaper was working its way off the wheel on the end. So by playing around with that knob, it was able to straighten it up and bring it back. So that worked pretty well. I just want to let you guys know, I've got a couple of videos out with these morel mushrooms. Um, kind of just a fun, high speed carving four of them in four minutes kind of video. That'll be popping up here. You guys can go check that out. Also, a tutorial on how to carve these mushrooms. So if you're interested in how to carve these morel mushrooms, they're pretty basic pretty simple carve. Um, I'm going to walk you guys through it and show you how to do that. So you guys can follow the link popping up here and go check that one out as well. If you've already this far in the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit subscribe. That kind of support is always wanted and thank you guys in advance. So now we're going to go ahead and take the sander and clean up this little bear. Now I do a lot of these little bears. They sell pretty well at shows and you kind of want to be able to sand around the snout and clean it up so it's a different color than the rest of the bear. So in my mind, I'm thinking this sander might be a great option for that to get into these tight spots around the face without taking the color off the, uh, the end of the nose here. So let's see how this thing performs. All right, well, the sander did pretty good cleaning up his face here. Kind of put it over here, you guys can see it a little bit better. Um, it's probably not something I would be using for production with these bears, but thinking ahead on some other carvings that I know I'm going to be doing where I'll be cutting up in to kind of reveal a carving or an animal from within a log and things like that. I could see using this to be able to get up in there and start sanding it out and smoothing it out. Um, I see this being more of a refined kind of tool, something you would use to, uh, to get in those tight spots where you just want to get it nice and smooth so you can have a nice clean finish. Now, hmm, you know, thinking as somebody who's starting to carve and just learning to carve, would this be a good tool for you? Honestly, I think that's just going to really depend on you and what you're, what you're looking to do um, as you get going in carving. Now, I know these tools aren't just for carving. They have many other purposes. So if you're here for that, I'm sorry. I don't have a bunch of other info on that. I'm, I can only talk about what I'm going to be using it for, which is cleaning up my chainsaw carvings. And I got a feeling it'll also come in handy in some of my furniture builds where I've got some really tight spots I got to get in and sand. So I am looking forward to using this thing and really putting it through its paces. 
So you guys will be able to see that in upcoming videos, you know, as I make carvings or as I make furniture, I'm sure I'll incorporate this where and when I can. That's pretty much it though. I mean, it's a pretty straightforward little tool. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I hope this will help those of you who are thinking about getting a sander like this, you know, make your decision. There are a bunch of other brands out there. I will leave links in the description below to this brand and I'll try to find a few others. You guys make purchases through those Amazon links. It helps support this channel. If you want to be able to help support this channel in another way, you can follow the link to my Patreon account. It'll be popping up here in just a second. You can go there, see what that's all about. I've got Patreon exclusive tutorial videos on there and well, some extras that you'll get that you won't get here on YouTube. Also, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and hit subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.